Get your CRM, project management, invoices, contracts with e-signing, forms, email marketing, all within your client portal with SweetDash. I'm gonna give you a detailed walkthrough of this truly all-in-one business software to help you grow your business. So stay tuned and check this out. So we're on the Sweet Dash site, sweetdash.com. Uh, we see here this is a all-in-one business software suite, and we'll look into exactly what that means. Scrolling down, I like this part of the site, uh, straight to the point. So this is the problem that Sweet Dash supposedly solves. Most business software products are one trick solutions. This forces businesses to cobble together many different software tools to accomplish their goals, which is time consuming, inefficient, disorderly, and expensive. This is something I can relate to and I do have this problem. I have a lot of software and SaaS tools that I have on my shelf and do not use and also have in my workflow. So I'm doing invoices over here, Proposals over there, contracts over here, uh, email there. You know, I have a SaaS tool. I have two or three SaaS tools for each function that I can use them for. Uh, the solution, Sweet Dash solves this problem by combining the most commonly used business tools into one cloud-based software platform where the tools are already pre-integrated and full of useful built-in automations. And the entire platform can be 100% white labeled for your brand. Uh, a lot of agency owners, they love the term white label. I do as well, except uh, I will not be selling. Uh, well, I don't really sell software solutions. Uh, I like, I guess I like custom branding uh, is what I like. I like to be able to custom brand everything that my agency uses so that my clients cannot see which tools I am using. I'm not trying to be super secretive about it, but I just think that having different brand names on each and every software tool that I use is just uh, unnecessary. I mean, the client does not need to see this information. Um, and the benefit of using Sweet Dash helps your business become more efficient, more organized, more professional, and more profitable. Dominate. I like that. Okay, so... Let's see. Uh, Sweet Dash replaces the core functionality of all this software. Secure client portals, advanced file exchange, a CRM or client management. CRM stands for uh, customer relationship management. Appointment scheduling, project management, time tracking and billing, estimates and invoicing, contracts and e-signing, custom embeddable forms, email and drip marketing, and real-time team chat. So let's dive into the actual platform. I will log into my Sweet Dash and we'll run through exactly what this app is providing for us. So this is the Sweet Dash dashboard login. Uh, this can be customized for your brand or each and every one of your brands from the back end. Let's log in first. So this isn't exactly what your dashboard will look like as soon as you log in. Obviously, I've put in some of my information already, like the brand colors, my logo, uh, my profile picture. So anyway, when you log in, what I really like is first, uh, while it is overwhelming, there is a ton of information and a ton of customizations. Uh, there is a get started section, uh, video episodes. Uh, it's more than one video. And there is articles or button, uh, links to their help desk articles for each and every step of the process. Uh, for example, starting with the basics, your logo, your colors, your custom branded URL. Um, and on top of that, you'll see at the top bar navigation on the right side, there is the lifesaver button. So this one is, this button is customized. Um, so 
It's for each section. Uh, it's customized to have the related articles. Uh, we'll we'll try this out in a second. Uh, let's go through first the logo and colors and, and the basic customizations that you would most likely do when you first log in. So we'll go to settings or sorry. Let's go to custom uh, company settings. Okay, so you see here we have company info, platform branding, email branding, and customized menu items. Uh, so customized menu items, you see on the left side of the dashboard, there's you know projects, marketing, billing, and each one has a lot of different options. I have not gone through all of them. I've only gone through the ones that I'm planning to use, which is the billing section for invoices and contracts. Uh, I will be using the CRM here. I have sales flare, but I want to try this out because I'm putting in my contacts anyway. And again, if you saw my last video, I'm using quoters for my proposals. So I have that integrated with Sweet Dash and I'm uh, pulling the data or pulling the contact data from quoters and automatically adding it to my Sweet Dash. Um, the, the pages and marketing, the email marketing and, and the forms, and the project management are things that I don't plan to use right now because I'm already using different so software for that. Uh, so you can put in your logo here, basic information, uh, location info, general settings. Again, everything can be customized, hidden. So all of these menus on the side, for example, if I'm not using the pages or projects, I can. I believe I can hide them uh, from the uh, back end uh platform branding this is where i've changed the side navigation the the colors i mean um so we have the dashboard logo the collapse logo the collapse logo being this uh and uh i, ne I need to change it to my white logo because that does not look good uh registration background image so this is what um the login or this is the registration page so when you have a client or a prospect first log into Sweet Dash and they're they're registering to your platform, this is the background you're choosing. The colors they you can add in the color codes. Let's see here the advanced controls, um, and there is the option of custom CSS, uh, custom CSS customizations. I am not good with this, uh, and I'm probably not going to use it unless I really need to. Uh, but the option is there for those that are good with CSS. Uh, white label branding controls. What does this mean? If enabled, this means that the on that only the master admin, no other uh, admins or staff, will have the visibility or accessibility of white label settings. Um, I'm not. I'm not reselling this platform, so it, this part doesn't really matter to me. Let's go to email branding. So this is for the marketing emails and any other emails that are being sent out from your Sweet Dash. I have my from name, uh, company name inserted, uh, your email. I'll show you how to verify your domain. Uh, I've already verified and input my domain here, but when you first log in, this would be blank and you have the option here to add in your domain. After you do, it's pretty much the same as any other platform. You're going into your uh, hosting provider, or if you're using Cloudflare, uh, DNS, you're going into DNS settings, you add in the records that they provide for you. Uh, mine here, I guess it's still pending. And another thing here is you can use your own SMTP to send emails. Here we have the email logo and colors. I like this. I want everything to be customized, as I mentioned earlier. I have an email logo. I, uh, I'm going to be changing this, but anyway, my own email logo here, the background, body text, body background, footer items, uh, and the footer items would be referring to, you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, some copyright messages or copyright text. Uh, the default is the Sweet Dash copyright text. So if you want to hide that you are using Sweet Dash, uh, you can add in whatever footer copyright you want to add in. Customize the menu items. This is what I was mentioning earlier. So like I said, I would not be using the project management. If we open this up, this is for adding in tasks. I think they're only in list view. I will look at it later, but either way, I, they might have Kanban, but either way, 
I use a different SaaS for client facing project management. So when I am in this menu here, I, I don't want to overwhelm my clients or my staff. So we would be hiding the projects. Uh, oh, this is great. I did not see this earlier. Uh, so I can, I can sh uh, choose who can view and who to hide this to. Uh, let's say we're hiding it to from everyone except myself and the admin or the master account and boom, it's gone or no. Uh, let's go or let's try master account admin. We just get rid of it entirely and there it's gone. Okay. Um, that I, I don't want to confuse myself later, so I'm going to add that back in for myself. But anyway, so everything on the side can be hidden, uh, and you can actually make custom menus. Let's try that. Oh, we can put in a URL. Open in, uh, open a new tab. You can also add an icon. Let's try that. And there we go. Okay, so that's very cool. I really like, I mean, uh, you might have seen other people talk about it, but you can customize almost everything in here, especially with the CSS editor you can do whatever you want um but i'm just gonna run down some of these because these are pretty self-explanatory if i miss something or you have a question feel free to leave it in the comments below i will get back to you as soon as possible so the calendar the calendar is a calendar we have appointment types let's see add an appointment yeah, pretty straightforward, public description, button text, text, uh, and the staff members. Okay, and assignments, I mean. Let's go to default availability. Again, I am not going to be using this calendar. I have, uh, we have a separate client-facing project management tool, and I also have a separate scheduler. So, but this is very nice, and that, I mean, if everything works out, I might just, I might as well put everything in here. The only thing is I'm going to ex assume that the project management tool is fairly simple considering how much this is do this platform is doing at once. This is the default availability and we'll go into settings and see what we have here. So I don't see a integration for, you know, iCal or Google Calendar. I may have missed it. I'll come back into this because it would be nice if I can integrate it with my work calendar on uh, Google Calendar, then I would be keeping this calendar in here. Uh, but I don't see the option right now. I will look into that. Here we go. And we're looking into the CRM. Uh, the CRM, I think it's nice to have a small mini CRM in here, especially because we are adding in Oh, I have some, I have a prospect in there. Uh, because we are adding in contacts anyway for sending out your contracts and invoices if you plan on using Sweet Dash for that, uh, which I am. Uh, I'll just go into settings here because uh, this is fairly simple, but let's see what fields they have or tags. Uh, custom fields. Oh, sorry. Ah, this is also, uh, this might relate to you. Do you primarily deal with companies or individuals as your clients? I work with companies, but individuals from companies. Uh, I have not turned this on right now, but let's say, for example, you're not sure what this means. So we click on the lifesaver. So, I mean, this is great. This is, so every time you click on that, on that lifesaver, it really is a lifesaver because whatever page or section of Sweet Dash of the platform you're on, they have it customized to have all the information relating to that specific page. So we're on the CRM, CRM uh, company first mode page. So I click the lifesaver button. Company first mode. So what is this? Uh, this is where you can put your account into company first mode. This is this is ideal if you are working with businesses as clients rather than individuals. Oh, so that makes sense for me. I am working with companies, not individuals. 
Uh, and circles. Uh, so circles is part of the CRM section here. So let's look at to what that is. Uh, you can choose to automatically create a circle for each company you create. What is a circle? Uh, it might be better to go to the circle section and we are clicking on the lifesaver. A circle is essentially a grouping of clients and prospects. Using circles makes bulk assigning resources like portal pages, files to multiple clients, prospects easier as you can assign resources directly to a circle and any users inside that circle will automatically gain access to any of those resources automatically. So this is very nice. This will save some time in your workflow. Uh, if you're adding a lot of prospects and clients and leads, uh, that can be grouped into certain niches, segments, or sectors and industries. Uh, this is very nice. Again, that lifesaver is very handy. Uh, events, not something I'll be doing, but you have the option, and I'm assuming that has to do with actual events. Let's see. At an event, yeah. So, you know, it can be an offline lunch, a weekly meeting. Oh, okay. So this is what I missed earlier, the, the tags. Uh, this is different companies, the CRM deals, you know, uh, whatever, whatever deals you are doing, um, CRM events. Yeah. So you have everything here, uh, project statuses, right? So pending working completed, rejected. Uh, these are things that I'll be using and trying to implement in, into this mini CRM. Uh, again, if you're using different currencies, you can manage them here. I've added a few currencies that we work with because our clients are not only working in dollars or Korean won. Deals. Okay, here also we can add in logos. Uh, here I've already added mine. This is for the invoice, the invoice settings. Uh, I am charging most of the, of the time in USD. I'm not sure what I have to do when I do change it into, oh, I, I already added the setting in. So when for each client, if I'm charging, if I have Korean clients on here, I would be selecting the KRW for the Korean one invoice prefix. Uh, and I have, oh, well, I, I, I believe I use all caps here. Um, and we're starting off from my, because I'm moving over to SweetDash. I already have a certain number of invoices on my other platform. We have email notifications. So this is very nice. Uh, send in, uh, yes, I do want this. Send invoices to myself for review. And the send an invoice reminder X days after due date. I would probably do one day. I find that better because they, with three days, five days left, they, they you know, the client will think or the prospect will think, okay, I have a few days left and then they'll forget about it. Uh, some terms and conditions. These are mine uh, here. Note to customer, payment description, and invoice notification. Uh, so who on your team is in charge? Uh, I am the only one. I guess I should ask, uh, add my, my accountant. Uh, estimate settings. Um, I don't. I don't really use the estimates because I have quotations in my proposals anyway. But if you're sending estimates before your invoices, this is something you can use. I guess I would use it after the proposals are done uh, and they're extending their contract. Maybe contract settings. So okay. So I didn't add this yet, but I will. I'll, let's do that now. I will add my own logo. Okay. So I have my logo in there contract i am the one going over it items uh this is nice i think i believe this is for your invoices yeah so um i mean i i'm doing this in my proposals and you saw if you saw my last video on quoters I, there's a section for this as well um i will go into the integration between quoters and sweet dash later but i will not be adding this at the moment but I probably will be later. Taxes, I have my taxes added in, or I will be adding my taxes in. Discounts, I don't really give discounts. And if I do, uh, they're not standard discounts. They're customized for specific clients. Uh, but you can add in your discounts here. The rest of the process is fairly simple. You add an invoice. And again, if you remember from the CRM or the contact section, you can add in uh, the invoice there. 
We have items, discounts, taxes, everything we saw earlier. They have subscription plans. Um, and this is all the settings that we had set up earlier. I forgot we should be looking at the gateways first. From here, so you see we have integration with PayPal, Braintree, Stripe, and Authorize.net. Uh, I would like to see a, you know, a bank transfer section, something, it, it, obviously you can't, you can't integrate with every single bank in the world, but I just mean an open section where we can leave in our banking details, like routing number and SWIFT codes because not everyone is using these to pay to make payments. Uh, I, I haven't checked in detail to see how I can do that, but I will be, con or maybe actually a better thing to do would be to click that lifesaver. Let's see, what is a payment gateway? I know what one is. Braintree authorized PayPal setting up Stripe. Okay, so it's very informative, but there is no option for a blank or a custom field, which is what I need. I will contact the support about this. Uh, but anyway, I have my PayPal set up. PayPal was very easy. They have, uh, if you get lost, just click on the lifesaver. Projects. I won't be using this, but I'm going to be reviewing it quickly or briefly so that uh, some of you who are not using any other PM tools, uh, project management tools, may be interested in this feature. Okay, we are looking at the project settings. Project name. Um, check out Sweet Dash Projects. Status is pending. No, working. We're working on it today. We'll finish it tomorrow. Target time, let's say 6 p.m. Uh, clients can't see this. Haha. <laughs> Client projects uh, info the information that the clients visible only to the client. Uh, I love you, and we will assign it to June. We don't have a secondary client, teammates. Let's put myself in there. Uh, so you can put in the different teams. If uh, my company, my agency is not that big, so we don't have several teams. We have, we do have project leaders, uh, but I'll put myself down, or maybe I didn't add it. I only have two people in here right now. Because uh, we're not using this live yet. Uh, task phase uh, project. Uh, we I don't have templates set up. We can set them up from the dashboard. Project economics. Uh, this I won't be using, but I'm assuming this is a uh, business sectors. If you click this box, you'll see the different types of business. Or let's do it now. Before I forget. And what do we have here? Global project. Okay, this is the project settings. So that is what they are referring to. Uh, business sectors here. I don't have anything added in, but you know, you can put something here like uh, automotive, automotives, or semiconductors, blah, blah, blah. Sign the project and add it. Um, the templates, I've never, I mean, I haven't used anything in this section. Uh, I don't plan to, maybe later down the road, add a project template. Uh, test template, let's see what they have. Or, I mean, let's see what we can edit. Oh, okay, so you're creating, okay, so this is nice. So um, for, so I'm not using Sweet Dash, uh, I'm not planning to use the project management here, but I do have a similar system in FreedCamp, which is what I'm using for clients. Uh, we have a set template uh, for the onboarding process, and that way I don't have to recreate each and every task, and I'm assuming this is what the templates are, the project templates. Uh, and you can have phases here, which is probably, you know, onboarding, management, uh, you know, optimization if you're doing a PPC campaign. Uh, let's see what if they have anything. Yeah. Title, description, status. Oh, these are actually pretty nice. Um, okay. Work requests. Uh, let's see what this is. Teams, timers, archive. Yeah, so there's a lot of things you can do. And most likely, 
you're not going to be using all of them. Um, moving on to the marketing, let's go to settings first so we get a general overview of what this exactly is. Okay, SMTP, SMTP or IP. Um, and you can also use uh, their sending servers, which I think I am using. I had my SMTP info information in there, but uh, I, I haven't tested anything yet. Uh, manage lists, manage templates, manage campaigns. So this is a, basically a very simple email marketing tool that you can use. Uh, it's very nice because you will, I mean, for example, manage lists, you would put in your prospects and maybe or your, your, all of your contacts and you can probably segment them. Let's try. Okay, when you list all, go to options. Or maybe not. Maybe we're not segmenting each list. Where the lists are the actual oh and the actual uh, segments. Add subscriber form. So this is tied back to the forms. I'm assuming uh, import import from CRM. Uh, this import staff export and auto responders. Uh, let's look at auto responders. Okay. So yeah, this is just uh you know you're you're crafting your own autoresponder. Yeah, fairly simple. Send schedule minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, going back, so campaigns, templates, and lists. Yeah, this is just a very simplified version of a email marketing platform, but it's very nice because it's already in your suite dash where you already have prospects and clients and leads. Portal. So I wasn't really sure what this was. So what we can do here, we'll go to settings, go to portal pages. And if you're like me and don't know what this is, we just open up the lifesaver again here. Uh, you can easily manage your portal pages. Uh, to manage a page, we've done preview page. I must, okay, so this is a page within your portal, um, which you can customize. This can be anything you want it to be. So you can have a section for news, uh, articles, or blogs, uh, you know, stuff that your clients would want to see. Uh, I don't really have anything that they would want to see besides the actual progress of the project. Yeah, it's a very simple, I think it's like a news bulletin that you can set up on this page on your, for the client's view. Like here, uh, I th I'm assuming they, I, I think they're using, I mean, their own, their own uh, editor here uh, for this section. So you can do something like this. Uh, I'm not going to be doing anything like this, at least, at least not now. Uh, knowledge base, or right, let's go back down to settings knowledge base a knowledge base is probably a knowledge base a help center uh, that you can create for your team or uh, for your team or your clients uh, purpose of knowledge base pages is to provide a well-organized private internal resource where you and your team can record your collective knowledges knowledge processes policies etc okay so this is nice uh, I uh, I should do this. Uh, we have one, not in this uh, platform, but we have one. We can just move it over here, uh, which would be nice, actually. So I will be using the knowledge base uh, and and adding in you know some sort of FAQ section as well, um, because without if you don't have that and SOPs, uh, like standard standard operating procedures, and other uh, commonly asked questions, frequently asked questions. You're going to get a lot of emails and you're going to be wasting or not wasting, but spending a lot of time replying to each and every one over and over again. So um, and then the third type of page they have is the workspace. A workspace page is a page that can be assigned to both internals and externals and is designed to be edited by anyone who is assigned and has visibility. In addition to this, each time a user edits the page, they are required to make a comment to describe the nature of their changes. Uh, so this is like a change log. Yeah, this is a change log. Uh, I won't be using this. I do not really need this in my workflow, but you may. You might. Um, and so those are that, that wraps up the three three different types of pages they have. Although I'm, I didn't really explain portal pages that well, but. 
Um, anyway, moving on to files. Uh, so this is nice. Uh, every, I mean, I think almost every project management tool has their own file section and that can be integrated with uh, most cloud storage. Uh, this one has a nice, it's nice. It can be customized or not customized. Uh, it is automatically linked to your contacts. So every contact you add, they're, they're having a separate folder created. And I believe you can edit that or customize that process as well. Uh, shared with client, private files, uploaded by... This is nice. This is automatic as well. I did not create these uh, folders. So that's very nice because in my other other uh, tool, I, I created myself. Um, yeah, manage notifications. So you have all of these options, capabilities. I don't want to prevent anyone or maybe... A, yeah, anyway... Allow media files to be embedded into pages. This is nice. Okay. Uh, pretty straightforward. What I do not see, let's check settings. I do not see a integration with cloud storage, right? Yeah. There's no integration with cloud storage. Uh, because I'm using the project management tool, a different project management tool outside of Sweet Dash that has their own file uh, section that is also integrated with cloud storage. Uh, I won't be using this uh, intensively. I will be using this because I am actually planning to move my onboarding flow, my onboarding flow for clients into Sweet Dash, and I'll show you why I am doing that. That'll lead us into flows. So flows is their own term. It relate. Uh, it stands for uh, automation, right? So let's create a flow. So there's two types of flows. There's the onboarding flow for new users and the on-demand flow for existing users. Uh, the difference here is the onboarding flow for new users are sent out or uh, triggered automatically when you add a new user, which can be staff or a client or prospect. Uh, on-demand flow is for existing users and they're not triggered automatic. I mean, they're not automatically set uh, for a new user, what on-demand flow is, just like its name, it's an, it's on-demand. Uh, when you want to trigger it, you can set that up from the back end. We'll go with onboarding flow first. I have a test one uh, running, but let's uh, just for to show you what this looks like. We set up the name. Uh, I like I like this. Enable help. I'm stuck for every step. So because you want to make it easy for the client uh, or, your, or your staff. Um, I will notify myself. Or, uh, and here, again, remember we saw the DDP, the dynamic data placeholders or the merge fields uh, settings for each contact. This is pulled in from your CRM information. Um, and this is the message you will get. And this will allow, allow uh, enabling this will allow uh, a client to click a button uh, for help every time or every step of the way where they get into some sort of issue or they don't understand what's going on. Uh, so here we have the different types of steps that we can add into each flow. Read and e-sign. So this would be for your contracts or, or anything else you need to be signed. Plain text, uh, file upload, file download, and form. So these are perfect for any for any onboarding. Uh, I would actually be, I'm, I have a test one set up, but I'm going to be using all of these, right? So, except for maybe form, but uh, plain text, you know, it's a, you know, it's a plain text. So welcome. Uh, thanks for joining. And we enable this, or I, I want to enable it. Edit content for user. You know, you can add in a picture. I like smiley faces. Please sign the contract in the next step, right? And I'll show you what this looks like for the uh, for the client or, or your teammate when they first sign in and get the, get this uh, flow triggered. Uh, read and e-sign. So here we go. Available actions. Send email notification to the client. Send email notification to the internals, which would be you and your team. Add to your email marketing list. Remove from the list. Add circles, yada, yada, yada. Configure actions. What am I doing for my action? I would be, as I mentioned earlier, sending out a proposal, or sorry, a contract. 
Um, trigger project set coordinator. Send email notification to contact. Save. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Let's do that again. Send email notification to contact. I'm sending. Oh, that's not. That's the f circles from name June. Um, sign my contract. Sign it, please. And here is the read and e sign. What does that mean? Any actions configured for this flow step will not be executed. Read and e sign. Edit content or add the pro, uh, add the help and blah and save. So that is uh, how we can set up a onboarding flow. Moving on, let's create one more to see the difference on demand flow. I believe it should look the same. It's probably where you're triggering it, right? Okay, so here it looks the same. So let's go into settings, uh, not this settings. Uh, flows on demand status and submissions. Okay, so where the flows are created in the flows tab. But to set up the triggers for the on-demand flows, I'm, I think we go into, I already assigned a flow here. Let's do it to this guy. Assign on-demand flow. So we created, or if you created one earlier, you would select that when, at the time you want to send or to automate the flow or start the flow, trigger the flow, excuse me. Uh, you would do that here. And finally, messaging, uh, straightforward. These are messages sent back and forth. These are not chats, right? These are messages, private messages, direct messages between you and your team and uh, your clients. I do not need this. Um, yeah, I don't need this for my team because I have separate chat like Slack. Um, but I guess you can use can responses um, for your clients. Uh, again, but again, uh, I use a different project management tool for my clients, so they wouldn't have to send me messages. They just reply to specific tasks or within the discussion board on that platform. Uh, the one tab that I did not look at was the forms. I have nothing set up, or maybe I do have something up. Uh, I think this is all, this is set up automatically, but anyway, client registration form, prospect registration form, and this one is probably a test form that I used. Let's look at client registration. We edit the form. Uh, here we go. Or maybe I did create this client registration form, form fields. You can set up custom fields here. We have primary. Let's see what they say. It's obviously going to be email, but yeah. Email, first name, last name, uh, phone, title, website, address. You can add all of these in. You can create custom fields, whatever you want. Uh, I guess you can, oh, sorry. I guess you can add in placeholders as well, right? Yeah, dynamic data placeholders, you can add in here. Form actions. Uh, yeah, so after they fill out the form and they, and submit, you can set up everything here. You can probably set up flows as well. Here we go, onboard flow. Uh, new client onboarding. So as soon as the client signs up, you have your automation triggered where they would have to either sign, uh, read and e-sign something like your terms. Uh, they send you your their files. For example, one of my steps in my client onboarding would be Send us your logo files, your branding, your color codes, and any other information. That is part of my, my steps. Uh, here, paid portal access. So if you are reselling this portal or you are charging, they will be presented with an invoice to pay and will be prevented. Yeah, so if you need your clients to pay uh, before they can do anything, uh, you can set this up. I do not do this because if they don't pay, I'm not working anyway. Uh, and that, that about does it. I mean, there's so much more you can do with this. Um, and they've also mentioned that they are going to be creating a simplified LMS, uh, learning management system. I think this confused a lot of users, including myself.
because I was expecting um, something like you know Learn Dash or or New Zendler, uh, something very convoluted for you know online courses. But that is not the case. That uh, I mean, maybe they will, but I doubt it. I think what they're referring to is you know a simplified uh, process or or a core, um, learning system. So. Uh, you'll understand what I mean when I show you what the onboarding flow looks like from the client side. Uh, let, let's look at that first so you have a better idea of what what this can do or how this can work as a LMS as well. Okay, so before we start the or we look at the onboarding flow from the client's perspective, I have to add a new client and I figured I might as well show you the process. Uh, we go into CRM and the add contact. Uh, we are going to add them for this sample or this test. Uh, we're going to add them as the client so that we can get the onboard flow started automatically. Uh, yes, I'm ready to invite them. We can send the welcome email immediately. And also this can be customized from the marketing section or the settings section under the email templates that you saw earlier. Basic info, I'm putting my information in here. We can set the profile picture, but this is not really an issue. Select coordinator, uh, company, assign circles, email marketing. Again, this is that list that I created earlier. It can be all, it can be segments, it can be whatever you want it to be. Event templates, we've gone through this. You know, this can be weekly meetings or, you know, offline lunch, wine and dine them. Uh, folder profiles, we did not go through this, but uh, th this is referring to the files, I think. Um, and the onboard flow so we are going to use the new client onboarding uh, tags you know you can put in whatever you want but if it's a certain sector like handsome uh, we'll put in the tag there general info um, you know very easy uh, they have a skype section okay so we're adding them in okay successfully added i've invited the client let me show you what that email looks like. So I've just received the email. The header is very ugly. Just uh, ignore it. It's sent from their servers, but from my email address. Um, and this is the footer that we had set up earlier. Um, again, ugly, but uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, let's click here to activate. This is what your client would see. This background is what you set it to. It can be anything. So I am now the client logging into your or our client portal on Sweet Dash. And here, see, we don't go straight to the dashboard. They need to go through the onboarding flow, which we had set up. So here you see the different steps. This would be a custom text box. Um, okay, I read through it. We continue. This would be the file upload. Uh, please give us your local files. We upload the files. They have to upload a file to be able to proceed. So let's just uh, do it to see what the next step is. And we're to the form. OK, the form is blank because I haven't filled anything out. But And then we get to the read and e-sign, and they're able to log in. So that is what it looks like from the client side. Uh, wait, let me go back to the client side. So um, I, I think, so I don't know exactly how they're going to be implementing the LMS feature. I think it's coming out later this year on Sweet Dash, but I'm assuming that this has something to do with it. So the this is the onboarding flow. Uh, remember, there is the on-demand flow as well. There, it's probably going to look like this. You can see that each, you know, it's broken up into steps. You can probably upload a video where they, uh, if it was a course, if it was an LMS, they have to watch the course. And then you can add in, you'll probably be able to add in like a quiz, uh, a question section, you know, put in slides. So this is what they're referring to as an LMS, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just bring that up because I was very confused at first uh, because I, I didn't understand why they wanted to add an LMS. But now I do. It's great for onboarding uh, your staff, onboarding your clients. Um, and the reason why I, I decided to buy Sweet Dash and move my onboarding process, uh, move my contracts. Oh, that's something we haven't gone over. Uh, into Sweet Dash is because you saw that flow. One, it's automated, so that's very easy. Um, and number two, the way it's set up, you, the client can't get lost. And even if they do, again, remember we had the option of adding in. Um, 
we had the option of adding in that uh, help I'm lost section, right? Uh, and they can contact you with any questions that they have. So that is why I wanted to do it because we have an onboard flow in our own project management tool that we're using right now, but they are it, it's just set up as a, a list of tasks uh, within the Kanban, right? And anyone with clients will know that they don't really follow through all of them. If there's too much to read or if there's too many steps, uh, you know, the clients are busy as well, right? But with the way that this is set up in Sweet Dash, uh, the client won't get lost. And number two, to be able to even log in and see the portal, they need to fill out, they, they need to complete the process, the onboard flow. So that is very good. You can streamline the process and make sure that the clients go through every step. Again, you don't want to make it too long though, because they will probably be annoyed. Uh, lastly, uh, the one thing I did not go through was the contracts. So let's go to the contract section. So for us, before we send the invoice, we need them to have the contract signed. Um, we can add in the logo here. This is just the contract settings. Uh, let's go to billing and contracts. We have contracts here. You can add a contract. You can add a template contract, which I have done. We'll go into templates. I've moved my contract in here already. Let's take a look at it quickly. So again, here you'll see the DDPs in here, contract creation date, um, the, all the, the billing description that's pulled directly from the invoice so that I never have to really look into this uh, because here, you know, in my contract, we have description of work here. Uh, so usually uh, previously I would have the scope of work uh, pulled in from the proposal. But as you see here, there is no proposals in Sweet Dash yet. Uh, I've spoken with the team. They will be bringing proposals. They're aiming for Q4 of this year. Um, so hopefully they bring that in. I don't think it's going to be a lot of work because they already have this, this contract and invoicing, um, done anyway. Uh, so that is my template. And if I go back and I will add a contract and here we, you know, we select an invoice, select a contract. So, uh, here I would need my invoice first, uh, instead of the contract first. And, um, the reason we need the invoice is because you saw earlier the DDP in my contract is pulling the billing information, which has uh, pretty much the scope of work in there. And they pull that directly into the contract and boom, my contract is done, right? Uh, so you're really streamlining this process. I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. And once this is done, we would get started working. That is it for Sweet Dash. Again, this was, I mean, this was a long video, but it was you know, the basics of the platform. I haven't touched on a lot of things here. Uh, you see here, they have 2FA, they have a white label mobile app. I, I haven't gone through this, but they have uh, some really cool features like, um, what was it called? I think uh, magic sign in or something like this. Uh, oh, here we go. The magic link login. So that, uh, let's just read what they say. Uh, clients who are not very tech savvy and have a hard time remembering pass uh, passwords are just flat out refuse to have another place to log in. Magic Link makes it so easy to log in that anyone can do it with no friction. Uh, this is this allows clients to not have to remember the password. It, it'll give them a magic link where every time they click it, they are already logged in. Another option uh, that I haven't gone over but is very cool is if you're running a WordPress website, you can uh, integrate it directly with your WordPress website and have a login tunnel from your website. So it's uh, logging straight into the platform. Um, so again, there's a lot of stuff here that I haven't gone over, but I don't really have to go over everything. Uh, I try to go over the major points. The reason why I don't have to go into everything is because obviously Sweet Dash will explain it much better than I can. And every section in this platform has its own multiple articles on, on the specific uh, function. So as I mentioned, don't forget to click on the help, uh, the lifesaver and you will be getting, you know, here there's already here, you know, we have the dashboard and widgets, announcement widgets, my task widgets, all these widgets that can be placed on the dashboard of the portal that your client sees. Um, and even besides this icon up here, you have the get help button. 
Uh, okay, so this is not linking to the dashboard, but this is a you can email directly or send in a su support ticket. So that's very nice. Overall, I am happy with it. I know some people do not like the UI. Me personally, I am a sucker for UI, but for some reason, I am not. Uh, I'm 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 okay with this. It's you know it's not beautiful, it's not pretty, but it works. And I think the reason why I'm okay with it is because there's so much help. Uh, they're with you every step of the way. Another thing is the e-sign. I didn't show you what it looks like, but uh, the clients can actually sign uh, the contracts or any other documents you have. You can as well, and you can add all of that in in your settings. That's it for now. And uh, the last thing is, uh, as I mentioned, there is no proposal function inside Sweet Dash. In my last video, I said that I am using quoters, which I still am for proposals. And what I do there is I am integrating my uh, contact information from quoters with Sweet Dash. So I am pulling in my contact information from quoters, and uh, it'll and I'm using Zapier so that all of that information is pull, is input directly into Sweet Dash right away. If I can have uh, an extra function. So when a client signs my proposal in quoters, I wish I could pull that information because you remember in quoters, we have the, the pricing table with the services and the prices. I wish I can pull that information directly into my suite dash and have uh, a invoice automatically generated based on the proposal that they signed in quoters. Uh, maybe that's asking for too much, but that would be really nice. Uh, I think if suite dash comes out with proposals anyway, that won't be necessary. But both of these platforms are on lifetime deals right now. So it would make sense, uh, I guess, as a user, it would be nice to have that. So that wraps up my detailed walkthrough of Sweet Dash. Uh, I really like it. Um, it's not perfect, but no software is, but it does what I need. Uh, what did I like about it? I like the invoices, contracts. Um, it's what I'm going to use it for. But most importantly, I really like the flows. So that's the main reason why I'm planning to use Sweet Dash. It will streamline my client onboarding process. It's automatic. Uh, any client that signs up, I can set it up. Uh, I don't have to worry about it at all. So that is the main reason I'm using it. Um, and the contracts and invoices, while they're not too complicated or sophisticated, uh, it works. So those are the reasons why I like it. The things that I believe um, it needs work on are the U the UI and the UX. I'm not a big fan of it. It doesn't look that great. But again, what makes up for that is the fact that there's so many help articles that will really guide you through the entire process. It's almost impossible to get lost in Sweet Dash, even though it's so overwhelming. Uh, and that goes not just for you, but for your clients as well or your, or your staff. So if you're looking to pick up Sweet Dash, they're having a lifetime deal right now. I have the link in my description, so click on it and check it out. If there's anything I missed, leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. See you next time.